Welcome back to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett, and I'm here to go into another item from D&D Attack Wing. This one is the Ballista Expansion Pack. Uh, so for those who don't know what Attack Wing is, it's a miniature game with some pre-painted figures based off of uh, Wizards of the Coast Dungeons & Dragons um, universe, and specifically their Tyr Tyranny of the Dragon storyline that's currently going on with the relaunch. Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, the game's put out by WizKids and they've hooked us up with uh, their main game and all the Wave 1 releases. We're super excited to go check it all out and we're going to be playing this down the road, we're going to get some advanced games in, film some advanced games, and of course be taking part in their uh, organized play and reporting back as you know we learn more strategy on the game, figure more stuff out about the figures, um, and kind of what we can expect. So um, so far we've opened up the D&D uh, &D Attack Wing main box, we've opened up the Frost Giant expansion, and now we're going to look at the Ballista expansion pack. It sounds exactly what it is, a Ballista expansion pack. Um, so. The Ballista is, Dwarves are proud of their craftsmanship in the engines of war, and today they're unveiling one of their finest works, Calamity, a Ballista covered in protective ruins that make it near and vulnerable to attack. Each bolt has been similarly enchanted to fire with greater force than anything the Dwarves have launched in their proud history. Uh, Balagos, the Red Dragon, is not happy at all about this turn of affairs. He plans to destroy Calamity as well as the very uh, training facility where it is being unveiled, and if he roasts a few dwarves in the process, so much the better. Will the dwarves be able to use Calamity to survive the onslaught of the vicious red dragon and his allies? This includes 10 cards, 25 tokens, one maneuver dial, one painted plastic creature with base and pegs. Um, so let's actually open this up. So the way the game works is all the figures are based off of points. So you and your opponents will go and figure out how many points you want to play, and you kind of build a force based off of that. So you don't know what your your opponent's going to bring. I really do hate these plastic clamshells. Um, so you kind of have to prepare for a lot of stuff and, and figure out your own strategy of how you want to play the game. Uh, the game's fairly new, so people are still kind of figuring out that whole strategy sort of thing. So let's crack this open and show off exactly what you get. One, here is the base. And here is the figure. Out of all that, this small, tiny figure. So to put it in perspective, ironically we have the red dragon out. Here is the ballista compared to the red dragon and the Ballista compared to the Frost Dragon that we've already opened up. Tiny, tiny, tiny figure. But let's see what you get. You get a whole bunch of tokens, some cards. Let's check it all out. go through the thick cards first. First, we got the dial and some tokens. We've got objectives and what looks like some uh, other war machines that you could probably play uh, possibly. I don't know. We'll find out. Some more war machines, some more tokens. And the uh, item for the figure's base. There's uh, two uh, values for them, but we're going to kind of go over that when we actually open up the cards themselves. Let's look at the cards first. We've got a scenario. It comes with a nice scenario. This is Dwarven Engineers have decided to give recruits at their artillery training grounds a treat by showing off their new prototype, Calamity. Meanwhile, the trainees will come... We'll be competing for a chance to join the crew and look forward to having the chance to fire something other than the blunted practice bolts they normally use. Someone else has been waiting for this day. Belagos was recently shot in battle by a ballista and now having recovered has decided to wipe out the next class of trainees before they can graduate, as well as the nearby ballista production factory. Though he normally works for hire, this job's on him and he's brought along a little help to get it done. Um, so, the scenario that you get with this is for two players. There's six objective tokens, 
50 points of Calamity plus upgrades. Belagos is 80. Uh, Belagos plus minions plus upgrades. Um, so here we go, and this explains what those ballistas are. Calamity places the six objective tokens according to preference in a straight line. Uh, 12 inches from Calamity's starting edge, as in the diagram below. Calamity may place them in any arrangement he desires. Along this straight line, each objective token represents a training ballista, the stats of which are outlined in the special rules below. A Calamity's player will uh, control these and also places Calamity anywhere behind the line of objective tokens. Belagos then places his creatures on the opposite side as per the normal rules. So there's some special rules, there's some uh, after the battle stuff. Um, again, very cool, fun scenario, it sounds like. So. Movement, it's a Ballista. I don't think it's really moving a whole lot. And let's actually look at the Ballista's cards themselves before diving into more of the upgrade. Oh, there we go. I went white by it. So if we got two, so one Ballista costs 21 points, the other one's 35. Uh, the difference is the attack for the most part. Uh, one has got six attack, also has a, a, a two shield um, compared to the one. So a little bit better for 14 points more. Um, the other also, comparing the two, is your armor cannot be penetrated by non-critical damage, even if the damage is from an attack that penetrates armor. So for the 35 points, you, you're looking at a Ballista that's... Uh, it's going to last a little bit longer than its much cheaper 21 point version. So let's see here. We've got a whole bunch of specials. Let's look at the special stuff. We're going to go by points. So first up, we've got Artillery Master. Uh, it's a special thing. After spending your target uh, token to reroll your attack dice, and after seeing the results of the reroll dice, you may disable this upgrade to allow yourself to reroll each attack die one additional time. Must be a siege weapon to equip that. Uh, we also have for three points, well-oiled machine. After performing a raid maneuver, you may discard this upgrade to uh, void receive an ex uh, exhaustion token. Uh, another three points, skilled machinist. Action, discard this card to repair one of your uh, face down armor tokens, or discard this card to flip uh, one of your face up damage cards face down if possible, and then remove up to two of your face down damage cards. Um, Four, Dwarven Precision, it's a 4.1. Uh, during a primary weapon range attack, if you spend a uh, Concentrate token, you may disable this upgrade to convert um, some different results. You must be a Dwarf or a Dwarven Siege weapon to equip it. Then there's Rapid Reload, Disable uh, Raid, blah, blah, blah. Continue Sect. Instead of uh, attacking normally with one of your primary weapons, you may make two separate attacks using any of your primary weapons. If you do soul roll, a minus one attack die for each attack weapon. Neither attack can be initiated from the attack. Text on the upgrade when this effect ends for any reason. You reset exhaustion. That's a lot of words. Uh, and the fifth, last one is five points, Demolitions Expert. So during the combat phase, if you uh, damage a creature with your primary weapon ranged attack, you may discard this card to make an immediate two dice uh, attack against the creature and every creature within range one of that creature on the same play level. This attack penetrates armor. Again, to siege weapons. And then finally, a campaign artifact, a bag of diamond dust. During the combat phase, if you just damage a creature with your primary weapon, range attack, um, force that creature and every creature within range one of that creature receive continuous effect below. Continue, or the affected creatures cannot perform any actions when this effect ends for any reason. Discard this card. A siege engine or troop must use a historic or heroic upgrade slot to equip this artifact. So. Going through the cards, we've got a lot of defensive items, which fits the, the description of the weapon. Um, we've got some stuff to improve the actual um, attacks a little bit, and um, some things to disable and um, kind of hold off your opponents a bit from uh, doing things, giving you a better chance to do some more attacks. So overall, like, the cards, the figure, it all kind of fits the fluff that they've laid out on the back, so I'm going to say pretty, pretty cool. Um, it fits really, really well. Um, again, it's a nice figure, really small. Uh, of course, you don't want to miss it and lose it, but uh, it's a nice addition. It, it kind of adds up some stuff. I mean, the fact that all the things below it says must be a siege weapon to equip makes me kind of think that we're going to be seeing some more siege weapons down the road. Um, I would think Wave 2 will probably have some, some more stuff along that line. But, again, it's another entry. Uh, it 
changes things up just a little bit, enough to uh, vary your game of D&D Attack Wing. It's out now. We're going to be back with some more videos, go over some more items, uh, and do more gameplay down the road. So come back, come back often. Um, until next time, this is Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. You can catch us every single day at graphicpolicy.com, uh, YouTube, Facebook, etc. All at Graphic Policy. We keep it consistent. Again, thank you to WizKids for hooking us up with the box. Until next time, keep it geeky.